Hello, thanks for joining us in today's session where we'll be discussing high performance computing on AWS. We will provide a brief overview of HPC services and features that AWS has to offer and discuss a customer case study uh, concerning running HPC workloads on AWS. My name is Wajahat Aziz. I'm an ML and HPC specialist solutions architect working with AWS. And joining with me today is Martin Kellerman, who is Director R&D IT Design Infrastructure at NXP Semiconductors. Martin is going to talk about NXP Semiconductors' journey on the cloud and how they're using AWS HPC capabilities for their chip design process. But before we dive into NXP's story, I would like to briefly talk about what AWS has to offer in terms of HPC capabilities in the cloud. Application of high performance computing touches nearly every aspect of our lives from uh, computer aided engineering using used to design your coffee maker to drug discovery apply applications that contribute to COVID-19 vaccines. However, many of today's engineers, scientists and researchers are constrained by their on-premise environments leading to a loss in productivity. With on-premise infrastructure, you can wait months, if not years, to, pro to uh, procure new hardware. This can leave HPC users with outdated hard uh, hardware and can require considerable time investment in creating and maintaining old technology. We built a complete suite of HPC services and solutions that have enabled customers to run their most demanding workloads on AWS, whether it's a Formula One racing team running computational fluid dynamics to design race cars, Halliburton running reservoir simulations to preserve and extend energy reserves, or Maxar that is changing the landscape of HPC weather forecasting. No matter the HPC workload, you can run it on AWS. AWS has more than 170 services, some of which are highly complex, like Amazon Polly that synthesizes human speech, but also many of which are foundational layers that most other services are built from. It is from many of these services that you're able to create an HPC environment that matches complexity and sophistication needed by your code. Because calling any or all of these infrastructure elements into place is just code, um, you're able to tailor each environment to what an application needs. Treating some codes in isolation can often lead to relaxing some extreme requirements, which otherwise might have added to the sheer complexity of designing a one-size-fits-all solution. Some of the services that enable our customers to build HPC workloads on the cloud include uh, foundational services like Amazon EC2 or storage and networking solutions like Elastic Fabric Adapter or EFA and FSx for Luster, and some tailor-made solutions for high-performance computing, such as AWS Parallel Cluster and AWS Batch. Using these services, it is possible for our customers to run the most demanding workflows on AWS. I would like to talk about two of these services in a bit more detail, as they are of particular interest to our customers in the HPC domain. One of those services is AWS Parallel Cluster, which simplifies deployment and management of HPC clusters, a parallel cluster uses a simple text file to model and provision all the resources needed for your HPC applications in an automated and secure manner. It also supports multiple instance types and job submission queues and job schedulers like AWS Batch and Slurm. Also, AWS Parallel Cluster has been designated as the first Intel Select solution in the cloud. This designation certifies a combination of compute fabric, memory, storage, and software used to ensure a high standard of performance and compatibility for HPC. As many HPC applications require high levels of interconnected instance communication, a high-speed network interface is quite crucial. EFA is a network device that you can attach your Amazon EC2 instances to bypass canal for fast network communication. With EFA, tightly coupled HPC applications have access to lower and more consistent latency, as well as higher throughput than traditional T uh, TCP channels. EFA enhances the performance of instance-to-instance -instance communication that is so critical for scaling latency-bound HPC applications. EFA is optimized to work on the existing AWS network infrastructure without modification to your code, and it can scale depending on application requirements. Most applications will work as is uh, once a supported version of MPI is made available to that application. I would now like to invite Martin to talk about NXP's journey on AWS. So Martin, thanks for being with us today. We know NXP has made a significant stride, uh, significant strides with using uh, AWS. Could you tell us more about NXP and how NXP is using AWS for HPC workloads 
and your motivation to start using the cloud. Yeah, thank you for the invitation, Wajnald. Uh, pretty excited to be here and to talk about NXP and, and its HPC environment. But first, before we go there, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, what is our company about and what we are doing. So NXP is a leading semiconductor uh, company in the automotive industry, uh, but also delivers uh, uh, chips in, 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 uh, for the secure uh, setups, but also for other uh, kind of solutions. We are located in almost all countries around the world, and uh, we have a pretty broad history with uh, coming out of Philips and, and, and uh, Freescale. Uh, we have around 11,000 R&D engineers, and so you can imagine that, uh, um, that R&D is a really big, important part of our company. So if we uh, go into a little bit on, on, on the characteristics around chip design. Um, chip design is a really complex uh, and difficult process where uh, time to market is a really important element. So there is always pressure to deliver uh, in time to the market. And that's why also uh, hardware design uh, projects, that, that's how they actually are called, um, they are really uh, strictly managed and, and, and they are following a really strict uh, process to make sure that the quality can be guaranteed from start uh, to end of the uh, process. And during that process, um, they of course uh, design uh, the chip, but also there is another important element and that's running the simulations. And there we will be talking a bit more about today because when we run simulations, we need a lot of capacity. It's, 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 it's EDA licenses, but also uh, compute and, 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 and memory and storage. And that is uh, um, yeah, making the, the, the process pretty complex because we need to make sure that uh, our business always has the right amount available to make sure that uh, they can deliver their products in time. What also is happening in our industry is that the chips are getting more complex, but they also go into smaller tech nodes to make sure that they fit in, in all kinds of solutions that we are providing to, to our customers. And, and that means that uh, when we are going to small tech nodes, that they actually even need more capacity than in the past. Um, so, so during the lifetime of the project, uh, resource demand fluctuates and, and we need to make sure that we have a good forecast. And around this process, because it's pretty interactive, we need to make sure that we always have the right capacity available and, 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 and we need to make significant uh, uh, investment in IT resources around the world to make sure that we can uh, deliver to our business. So let me talk a little bit, let me tell you a little bit more about our journey in general around uh, the design environments. So we started uh, a long time ago um, with, with centralizing our environments in a regional setup. And the reason why we did this is to make sure that, that uh, our users could log in from anywhere and, and collaborate together and make sure that, that, that we standardize our environments in such a way that everybody had the same experience. There's only one big uh, boundary which is there in, in chip design, and that's the latency factor. The latency needs to be good enough that, that, that the designer can make a chip. You, you can imagine that if his mouse pointer is seen like multiple times on the screen, that uh, designing a chip becomes really impossible. And therefore, uh, we have chosen to, to centralize everything in the regions to keep uh, the latency in control. And that was actually quite a big success, that, that, that consolidation, because everybody got the same environment and worked in the same way. As I already explained before, um, we saw also the demand fluctuating more and more. And that's why we, five years ago, decided to go for a cloud offloading solution. And, and that was actually together with AWS, and, and we looked for options to uh, offload certain simulation work and uh, to make sure that uh, if the need was there, that, uh, that we could uh, uh, offload this work to the cloud in such a way that, uh, uh, that it was not really hampering our process, but really supporting. Now, the good news was that uh, this really helped us to manage better our capacity in our data centers, but there were also some drawbacks to this solution. And, and, and that has to do with the fact that you, you need to copy data between our on-prem data centers into the cloud and back. And, and you can imagine that for, for a lot of short-running uh, workloads, 
Uh, this is an ideal concept, but for longer work, running workloads with a lot of data gener generation, it's, it's, it's less, less suitable. And therefore, uh, we have been thinking, could we not change this setup? Because the demand was clearly there, the, the cloud was really a suitable solution, and we, we were thinking about the next step in that. So before we go there, I think it's important to understand a little bit more about our uh, architecture. So as already said, uh, uh, there is a, uh, the designer gets a, 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 a geographical interface, and in that interface there is a VDI, and there he logs on, and he can do his design work. When he has completed his design work, he needs to make sure uh, that uh, the, the design also functions uh, in, in such a way that uh, uh, yeah that, that that we can deliver what we promise, uh, and and for that we run simulation. And the reason for that is that you don't want to go with a, a chip design to a factory uh, and, 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 and 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 make a mistake because that will cost you millions. So we really try early in the process to 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 see if there are any mistakes to prevent the situation uh, that NXP as a company needs to uh, yeah, take back uh, chips with uh, errors or other issues. What we also saw is that uh, this uh, compute needs to be very fast. Eh? So we have uh, special compute hardware and we have special storage, uh, NFS based, to make sure that uh, uh, all the, uh, the workloads can be uh, managed efficiently. And what we also is typically for, 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 uh, for high performance compute uh, for semiconductor companies, is that we generate a lot of small files on our storage in a lot of uh, deep uh, directory structures. So we really need to manage this in a proper way. And next to that, of course, uh, you typically see in these uh, uh, HPC environments, there's a lot of supporting infrastructure, like a license service where the EDA licenses are running on, but also uh, vaults where all our IP is stored. So now you know a little bit more about our uh, overall uh, architecture for HPC. And there again, uh, what we, we saw, uh, we, we, we purchased always all our hardware, we, we put it in our data centers, and we were always uh, short on hardware. Eh? So we, we invested a lot on peak capacity, but you can imagine uh, that at a certain moment uh, during the, uh, 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 the day or the weekend, yeah, that we, had, we actually needed less capacity, and then uh, capacity uh, was wasted, while uh, during the week, sometimes we needed more capacity, which we could not uh, provide to our business, also really hampering them. And what we also saw uh, that we learned during our offload uh, uh, work is that yeah, in, in, in the cloud, you don't really have this challenge. Yeah? We can uh, easily uh, scale up and scale down, and, and we can run our HPC uh, workloads. And it also offers a lot more flexibility. Yeah? So we can move capacity between regions because you can imagine that uh, at all given time you have uh, di different type of projects running in the regions, but the, the, the request for capacity is not always the same. So we could, we, we could easily shift uh, workloads. And of course, what is also really interesting for us, di use different CPU types uh, to make sure that we fit the best uh, uh, CPU with the best uh, uh, simulation. And what we have been looking at is how can we use Spot, eh, which is uh, really interesting price-wise uh, in our workloads for short running heavy uh, uh, workloads. And with all this, uh, we, we, yeah, we get a lot more freedom, at least that was what we felt, when we would move into uh, the cloud. And that would also support us in, uh, in our red race uh, with uh, the smaller uh, socks designs and, and in the end the, the, the need for more uh, uh, capacity. And that's why we, we decided uh, uh, yeah, to make the next step. So it's interesting that you mentioned uh, performance and flexibility in running cloud workloads, uh, a point that I would like to expand on a little bit. So at AWS, you have access to virtually unlimited infrastructure. This allows you to scale on demand very quickly and you will only pay for what you use. For an on-prem installation, you're limited to the fixed size of your cluster. If you need to go from 100 instances to 1,000 instances in minutes, AWS enables this elasticity by eliminating job queue uh, times and scaling your clusters as high as needed. When needed, you can reduce the time to market or publication. 
Also, the agility of AWS allows you to fail fast, iterate quickly, and reduce time to results before it would take two to three months to procure a server, set up power and networking just to find out that you ordered the wrong hardware. At AWS, this process takes just minutes. You can quickly determine if you're using the right resources for HPC workload uh, and continue uh, doing your work. And because you're only paying for what you use, you can ensure you're optimizing uh, your costs as well. And finally, with our global footprint, you can increase collaboration with access to clusters uh, from around the world. This results in faster time to results and a better return on investment overall. Um, and additionally, the HPC industry continues to challenge the limits of computing. We speed up clock speed on processes and shrink their size. We grow the size of memory. We increase the capacity of storage. We push more bits across pattern networks in new architectures. We come up with new scheduling algorithms to maximize utilization of capacity we have. And we optimize the cost of operations constantly to get budgets allocated to buy more capacity. However, one thing remains constant, which is we never seem to have sufficient resources to do everything we want to do. Our hunger for time on HPC systems is never satiated. So we create uh, queues and allocation policies and teach researchers how to write grants, proposals, and that include system timer. There's always a hope of a chance to test out a great idea over the weekend or holidays. We often do not realize that uh, we are in fact burying innovation behind walls of bureaucracy and delays. So what if the uh, queued genomic sequencing holds a cure for pediatric cancer? Or what if the delayed seismic reservoir simulation holds the answer to untapped energy resources? How do we place a price in delaying these innovations? So at AWS, we crafted a, a range of HPC solutions that allow you to unbound your innovation. We combine the latest compute, networking, storage, security, cloud orchestration and visualization technology with a vibrant partner and ISV community. This allows us to offer a highly customizable computing platform for organizations planning to leverage the cloud for a broad range of compute intensive workloads. Um, you can, uh, our partners also have demonstrated scaling clusters for over a million vCPUs on AWS. What could you do with that kind of capacity at your fingertips? How might you look at problems differently? Imagine uh, creating your own custom cluster mix of GPUs, CPUs, storage, memory, and networking just the way you want it and running your experiments, getting the results, and then tearing it all down. And think of uh, this process repeating across thousands of companies, hundreds of research universities, and dozens of national laboratories. Um, having said that, Martin, could you tell us a bit more about the progress your team has made in terms of uh, deploying your solutions on AWS and how you have transitioned your HPC architecture onto AWS? Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, move to the next slide. Yeah, so what we did is uh, knowing all this information, we started in 2020 a project to see if we can validate uh, an entire uh, design environment in the cloud because that was our big idea not to, uh, to offload anymore, but to really build a, a complete environment in the cloud. So first of all, we did a successful POC, validating the technical capabilities and the performance. And of course, we needed to adapt there to uh, all kinds of uh, cloud native uh, solutions, but actually that went uh, quite well. And, and, and uh, yeah, we are now using uh, several uh, solutions like Lustre for FSX, but also other things. And then, of course, uh, the big thing uh, was around the corner to do a real pilot uh, with our business to see if they are happy with uh, how their design flows run, how the tools work, and, and also, in the end, the user experience. So we really tried for the, for, for the users to stay as much as possible what they have today because we know they like it and, and, and we didn't want to deviate too much. Now, the good news was that they really liked it. They, they, they saw a good performance. They could do their work as they do it always. And for them, actually, it didn't matter so much if they were working in the cloud or on-prem. And that's actually for us a huge success because that makes uh, the adoption of uh, the cloud uh, a lot easier. And in the background, uh, yeah, we can do a lot more as already discussed. What we also saw is that one of the business projects, they were so excited that they uh, decided to stay in the cloud. And there was also a reason for that because we were running into a bit of a crunch in our own data centers. And they said, okay, let, let us stay in the, in, the, in the cloud. Let us finish our project. And that also really helped us to, to learn more how, how things run in the cloud and to work together with our business to make everything yeah, 
run really smoothly. Today, uh, we are really building our production environments uh, uh, and onboarding all the projects into these uh, production environments. And we are focused uh, on, on, on Europe first, uh, and then we will go to the next uh, uh, regions. Yeah, and, 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 and one of the things which is really important uh, for us, of course, is that we make sure that, that the performance is right. And as already said, the business was pretty, uh, uh, pretty enthusiastic. And, and that you can see here, right? we made a nice benchmark yeah, where we took one of our EDA tools, in this case, Spectre, a well-known uh, tool. And, uh, and we did, what we basically did, we had, had, had a couple of scripts uh, built and those run uh, every day, uh, 24 times a day. And, 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 and they, yeah, they, they run a couple of simulations. And what we really saw is that uh, uh, the, the AWS uh, architecture fitted really well. Uh, actually, it outperformed uh, our own uh, systems, which are on-prem and which are still pretty good uh, these days. So that, that was a really nice surprise for us. And we had a couple of uh, um, CPU types, which were really, really impressive. And, and, and I, I, I know for sure we will be using them in the future. However, there was also one other thing which was really important for us, and that was that the price uh, performance tech was good. And, 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 and we saw that the AWS, uh, the C5 CPU, is an excellent uh, uh, workhorse uh, for our uh, compute. And, and that is probably the CPU, at least for now, we will start using the, much, the, the most. And you typically see that also this one scored uh, higher than, than our own uh, compute farm. So that you can imagine that that made our business pretty happy and they are pretty happy to work uh, uh, with this uh, compute in the cloud going forward. And what we also saw, and that was also interesting, is we saw, we saw constantly that, uh, uh, that AWS was releasing new CPUs, new uh, systems, and, and that also really helps us to, to, to make a next step in, in performance, but also making sure that we have the right uh, performance uh, price balance. Yeah, so uh, especially on the point of uh, adding new CPUs, AWS constantly adding new instance sites, etc. Does it really contribute in terms of uh, value add for for your organization having new instance sites available on a regular basis? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because one of the interesting things we saw is that there are two C5s actually in this picture, and the the the, the one on the bottom, the I, I believe it's the eighty one twenty four M. That's basically the, the one we which, which we started with, and that one is now getting replaced by the new one. And the new one is just faster. And, and because it's just faster, the simulations are uh, a quicker finish, which is really great because that, that, that saves us time. But also our licenses and EDA licenses are typically very expensive, are released quicker and can be reused for, for other simulations. So it has, has two big benefits. Yeah? We could theoretically release a product quicker to the market, but also uh, yeah, we could more uh, uh, optimize on the usage of uh, our compute farms. So yeah, that, that, that has a really big benefit. Mm, that's really good. Yeah. And then if you look at the architecture, I showed you a picture before, eh? and then you see now the architecture we have in the cloud, which is yeah, f fairly uh, identical what we have in our on-prem data centers. We had to make some choices, but, but in principle, all the compute, the VDI, uh, the storage, everything we use in the cloud, even supporting services we, we, we run in the cloud to make sure that, the, uh, that the, the look and the feel for the users is as, as good as it is on-prem. What we still have on-prem that are a couple of services like, like, like monitoring, license, and LDAP. And, and that has to do with the fact that yeah, we use these uh, everywhere and we want to give still the users the same experience uh, from logging in uh, anywhere, everywhere. Um, and one of the things we really needed to test there, uh, if the license service were still performing in cloud, and we saw that we had pretty good results there, that, that the latencies uh, were actually negligible. So, yeah, it was pretty successful, and, 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 and this gave us a really good uh, next step uh, in, in, in onboarding uh, more workloads in, in the cloud. Um, thanks, Martin. So what are NXP planning to do next? Yeah, so what we are planning to do next is we, step by step, we will start onboarding all the projects into the cloud. And, and that means that when uh, a, proje a project finishes on-prem, that we really uh, bring them into the cloud and that they will run for the whole duration in the cloud. That is one thing. And the second thing is that 
we are really looking at uh, how can we optimize the cloud. Eh? So with all those different type of CPUs available, you could imagine that uh, most of the simulations have some kind of a sweet spot where uh, uh, yeah, you can make different choices in the running simulations on different type of CPUs, eh? where certain uh, simulations could be faster. But with, what you typically also see in HPC is that certain simulations you run overnight, and there you have a little bit of time, and you could choose to use a, a cheaper, a little bit slower CPU, but still having all the simulations finished by the next day. So that are the really next exciting steps we want to make, because that will make the environment more efficient. And if the environment is more efficient, we can be going uh, quicker to the time to market eh, with our designers, but also we can make sure that the cost uh, stay in control. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you've already talked a, a lot about some of the benefits you've achieved, but one thing I picked up on from your last response was that the ability to be able to experiment with different um, hardware configurations, et cetera, and find that sweet spot for the right uh, um, right instance types and networking, et cetera, for a given uh, simulation that you're running. So is that something that you're planning to continue using in terms of an iterative exercise to identify the, the best possible uh, combination of uh, resources? Yeah, ex exactly. That's exactly what we will do. Eh? So we are actually also working together with AWS to to build uh, a, a data, data analytics environment with machine learning. And that environment we will use to to give a lot of uh, input uh, to that environment to see what, how can we optimize uh, our simulations in such a way that they are a good fit for for system uh, certain system types, and 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 when we can start predicting that, we can also start uh, steering our uh, simulations to to the right uh, type of systems in the cloud, and 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 that will really help us to make a next step, and then we can also. Yeah, optimize further uh, on, on, on efficiencies. Mm -hmm. That's great to know. Um, so thank you, Martin, for sharing your insights into NXP's use case uh, for HPC. Uh, if you need more information, uh, you can find many white papers, webinars, and blog posts at this link, aws.com slash HPC. You will also find a link to, tell, uh, to all the HPC services and the link in case you want to contact the AWS HPC team. Thank you for joining us today, and uh, please uh, don't forget to complete the session survey. Thanks a lot. Bye.